there everyone my name is Alif Ayman bin Abdul Samad I am a student of University Technology Patronus uh, currently undergoing my degree in electrical and electronics engineering now I am taking I am doing my internship uh, period here at Visenergy Sinaran Bahad so throughout this whole video I would like to talk about my journey here uh, as an intern at Visenergy Sinaran Bahad Synergy Center in Bahad is a subsidiary of the parent company Virtual Instrument and System Innovation Center in Bahad. The company focuses on producing a system that has been tailor-made to fit the requirements of their clients. The company has been producing a lot of systems for major industries such as the marine and offshore, manufacturing, aerospace, energy, and research and development. Having been awarded the silver status uh, by National Instruments for the Alliance Partners, the company specializes in implementing National Instruments hardware and software into the system that has been produced. The synergies in the Rambahart engineers are CLD, meaning they are Certified LabVIEW Developers. Well, uh, LabVIEW, <laughs> what is LabVIEW, right? LabVIEW is a graphical-based programming software that is also from National Instruments. So uh, being an engineer from Vizsynergy Center Impact means that you are a very competent programmer um, in, of, of the software. Given that I've only heard about LabVIEW on the day that I started my internship here uh, at Vizsynergy Center Impact, I was actually taken aback because I didn't learn anything about uh, LabVIEW before. I haven't even heard about it. So uh, studying with Synergy Center but as an intern, I was kind of afraid because it was a new language and I thought it would be hard. But to my surprise is that it was actually much easier to learn the language, um, not language, to learn the program software uh, because the company has a YouTube channel, probably where you are right now, which is called VC Academy. Here is where the engineers themselves uh, create, record, recorded themselves. Uh, teaching uh, basic commands of LabVIEW, making them into tutorial videos and posting it up here on their YouTube channel. So, with this uh, information to uh, being accessible for me, I was able to quickly learn uh, the basics about LabVIEW because the engineers have uh, made it easier to understand. LabVIEW is a very wide language like very wide usage of its programming so there's still a lot for me to learn however every time when i encountered something new when i was trying to learn by myself and i couldn't comprehend what i was trying to learn uh, the engineers around me uh, they are very helpful they always taught me on they always uh, explained how the function works how do you use it in your program how do you you how do you make that a function uh being able to advance using that function in live view itself so uh, having uh, great colleagues having great uh engineers around me was al always a key factor for me being able to understand live view very quickly for the past three months where i started my internship back in Aug uh january sorry uh, I was undergoing what my university would call a student industrial training, uh, like a normal internship. So during the past three months, I was able to assist the engineers in one of their ongoing projects. The project was for the Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research, or also known as MIROS. The project uh, objective was to be able to acquire data from a car. I was only able to participate in the finalization of, of the project where I was mainly focused on installation and troubleshooting. Even though I had only participated towards the end, I was able to learn a lot from the engineers themselves uh, by helping out and observing their uh, work. Due to the system hardware and software being developed by the engineers themselves, mainly using uh, hardware from national instruments uh we were uh we had to do troubleshooting for both the software and the hardware the four main issues that 
uh, came up during the troubleshooting uh, software and hardware was that the digital input from the car uh, did not function normally. The other one was that the CAN bus of the car was not sending correct information. Uh, the GPS were not sending any data and the cameras in the car uh, did not just simply didn't turn on so to overcome this we handled it one by one so the first problem that we handled was the digital input from the car itself the digital input here consists of the signals of the car the horn the braking lights uh, better thing yeah, the parking brake so anything that uh, was essential for a driver uh, we wanted to acquire the data from so the data that was being sent over was not being placed at the correct uh, position in their human machine interface which is the user's interface so first of all we did a continuity test on the wires uh, connected to the system and to the car so we found out that some of the wires was not connected properly so we had to change uh, it up a couple of times to get the proper configuration uh, according to the past uh, drawings of the circuits of the system uh, another way uh, another way the other thing that we did was that we checked programming of the system uh, we had to change uh, some of the some of the bit of the program so that it will get uh, the proper configuration that was able to check all the data from the car however after a couple of times changing it was found out that the horn was not functioning properly so we had to open up the digital box uh, the digital block that was under the steering wheel of the car so after finding out that the wire from the car from the block that was connected to the system was misconnected so we had to change that and it was also found out that uh, due to the sample rate that was being recorded you had to press the horn a little bit longer so that it would be detected the next main issue that came up during troubleshooting was that the CAN bus of the car did not function properly what is a CAN bus? a CAN bus is a controlled area network bus that is being used on a car to transmit information so that anything uh, so that the car can, uh, is able to communicate uh, is data with each other so the purpose of us extracting data from the CAN bus is to be able to get the reading of the M from the car so the problem was that uh, during the initial testing CAN bus did not send data of the RPM so as usual we did which we troubleshooted we rechecked everything rechecked the software uh, rechecked the program and in the program there was nothing wrong so we rechecked the wiring uh, the wiring had nothing wrong initially but then after checking the continuity test of each wires it was found out that in one of the connectors the wiring so the soldering of the connectors for the uh, wire was not soldered properly so that was the solution to that problem the next problem accounted was that the gps was not sending any data it was sending useless data at one point so after further research about the module itself uh, and the gps itself we found out that the gps uh, had to move the GPS had to move, meaning that the car had to move uh, for it to be able to create any sort of data that was relevant and to send it to the system. So that was the solution for us. Uh, after uh, solving, after figuring this out, 
we went out for a test drive uh, where the car we acquired data while driving it and later on we checked that the gps has sent uh, is sending valuable data is sending readable data that was correct so the solution to that was that the car had to move for the gps to send data the final problem encountered was that the cameras in the car was not functioning properly so the cars uh, the camera's function was is to record what was happening in the cockpit of the car uh what's happening uh outside out of the driver's um uh, driver's sight and what was happening behind uh the usage of this data was to be able to see if there's anything going wrong from outside of the car itself so uh after rechecking and seeing all possible problems that could happen with the camera itself uh with the system itself um because the cameras was sent the camera's data was sent through a video encoder uh, to be saved on the system in the system uh, after checking that thing was wrong and finally it was concluded that the camera in the car was a problem the camera itself was a problem because it was an old camera the wiring was flimsy so uh, we talked to the person the person that was uh, involved with the project from Miros side uh, we talk about the possibility that the camera's uh, wiring was flimsy and showed it that after wiggling the wiring it was coming on coming off so uh both sides concluded that the way the camera was faulty so this was my three months here at v synergy Sindirambahai. i have learned a lot uh while interning here at v synergy Sindirambahai. i've learned a lot from the engineers themselves i've learned a lot by myself uh, by myself about the industry uh, i've learned new skills uh, new knowledge like let view programming which would be very helpful towards me pursuing for me pursuing uh my degree in electrical and electronics engineering uh how this all ties back to my uh coursework to my program in university which is electrical and electronics engineering is that the company is an instrumentation and control systems company i've learned that before uh, so being able to apply what I have learned, being able to see what I have learned uh, in front of me and happening, it was an eye opener. I was able to learn a lot, much more than I was in a classroom. So I am very thankful towards the company for giving me the chance to learn about the industry. And I would like to thank the engineers who have uh, who accepted me open heartedly uh taught me a lot of things helped me with a lot of things uh i would like to thank them all so in conclusion is that to close out this video is uh thank you for watching uh this video and i would like to say thank you again to the company